This is a test of the city block audio system.
And me. Oh, well, we'll call this meeting to order. March meeting, March 7th meeting, the planning board. It is 4.03 p.m. Um, there's the flag. Please rise. Oh, oh, could I sure. I'd like to the of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under the law, indivisible, and justice for all. This pastor is not so. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for all that you do for our great city. Father, we ask that you guide us with wisdom. Um, give us the knowledge that we need to do all these cases before us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Roll call, Ms. Krentz. Thank you. Chairman Killebrew. Here. Vice Chairman Barnes. Here. Uh, Mr. Deloach, uh, Mr. Chair, is absent for the record. However, it is an excused absence. Mr. Wallace is absent. Ms. Rawls? Here. Ms. Wilson? Here. And Ms. Owens? Here. We do have a quorum, sir. Thank you. Um, approval of the minutes from February 7, 2023. Make a motion we approve the minutes. Mr. Chair, I'll second. Motion and second. All those in favor, speak about the same aye. 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 All those opposed? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Thomas, what did I do wrong? Oh, oh, I did. I'm sorry. All right, then. Any person wishing to appeal any decision made by the planning board with respect to any matter considered at such meeting will need, will need a record of the proceedings. And for the purpose, may need the and for such purpose, may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings made, which, which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based, for Statute 286-0105, persons with disabilities. Uh, I don't need to read that. Sorry, I went too far. Thank you. We've already done the approval minutes. Um, is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak of comments to anything to the public planning board other than what's on the planning board's agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. We'll move on to the regular public business. Ms. Walsh, PV case 23 01. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Walsh, planning director. This is a request to annex. Point, approximately 0.9 acres into the city of Palatka for the purpose of connecting to the city's water and sewer system. Um, there, there was hesitation there because the uh, initial application included two separate parcels. And after the staff report was written, <laughs> the applicant was in the process of combining the parcels, and so the acres changed just a little bit, and it's, it, varies between 0.92 and 0.97, depending on the site plan or the property appraiser's records or the, yeah, so you get the idea, but it's approximately 0.9 acres. Um, the uh, future land use map from, would be amended from Putnam County Commercial to City of Palatka Commercial, and the request is to rezone from Putnam County Commercial Light C2 to City of Palatka Intensive Commercial District C2. The application, um, the parcel is located on the northeast corner of State Road 19 and Tolls Avenue. Please tell me if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tolls. Avenue. It depends on where you're from. I call it Tolls. You do. Oh, I call it Tolls. Okay. You're all good. We all know what you're talking about. Very good. Um, the, uh, again, the purpose of the request is to connect the city water and sewer services and construct a restaurant. Staff is reviewing the site plan for the restaurant at this time. Um, the subject parcels are currently vacant but have structures on them at one time, and parcels around them are not within the city limits of Palaka. However, State Road 19, that right of way was annexed into the city around 1987. And staff will stand for any questions that you might have. 
Have any questions, Dan? Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this? Okay. The applicant is present. Okay. Are you the applicant? Okay. Uh -huh. Do you have any questions to the applicant? Wow. I know. <laughs> um, okay. What is the public speaking? Um, is there, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chair, if I may, I will move that we uh, approve the annex of one of the 514 and 510 towns into the city. I second. So motion and second. Same discussion. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of this amendment with our agenda property item, say aye. 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 All, all, all those opposed? That's it, unanimous. Thank you very much. Oh, is this the three part? Okay, yes. All right. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to amend the future land use map from Buffalo County Commercial to the City of Black and Commercial. Second. Here is motion and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? I don't have it. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we uh, resume this parcel from Putnam County Commercial General White C2 to City of Black Commercial Intensive C2. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Hearing a motion and a second. All those approved, but is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Yeah, Three quarters, right? Congratulations, sir. All right. You ready? Already, you know. Yes, sir. Um, the next case is uh, in a, a request to amend the future land use map. Um, it's a very large piece of property, it is being postponed to April because I misadvertised the caption in the paper. I didn't get the uh, land use and zoning correct to transpose them. <laughs> I knew you were going to get me in trouble. <laughs> um, I, anything to make you happy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, the applicant is en route. They should be here any moment. If you have questions, you're welcome. I would defer to her. But um, I will be doing a brief description of the project in the upcoming uh, staff presentation that I have for you. Project presentation. So, if we're going to postpone it, do we need to even, I don't mean, know, I don't mean to be tacky here, do we even need to be here from her or what? Um, I agree with you, Mr. Chair. I don't think there's a need for us to move forward. Ms. Walsh and I talked about it. We didn't want to talk with them, you know, outside of this meeting, but since it's been postponed and not been heard at this meeting, then no, we don't want to bring it up. Okay. For my uh, favor of all the rest of the board, I'd say we move on to the next okay. business at hand. All right. Got that presentation. So this is a, a, a synopsis, a summary of the projects that have occurred throughout 2022 and through the end of January. I'll be doing an updated presentation for the commission on Thursday night, but it will be much more brief than this one <laughs> um, because it will only cover obviously February. So um, during the 2022, we submitted the annual certified local government report what is this one? You do what? I thought you did your job. <laughs> Here. For the record, I've never had someone turn a what's the point here. <laughs> so the certified local government report is something that is required to be submitted every year to the state in order for us to keep that status. That status allows us to apply for grants um, from 
from the DEO, the Department of Economic Opportunity. Um, you'll see in the net and another slide that um, one of the things that we received a grant for as a result of this certification was to update our historic preservation cultural resources survey for the historic districts in both or both historic districts north and south. Next slide, please. Thank you. One of the projects you've probably seen under construction right now is Aspen Dental. It's at the site of the former King Buffet on State Road 19. Demolition was complete at the end of January, and I drove by there today and we've got block almost all the way up to the roof system, getting ready to um, top it off. Next project, next slide, next slide please. Aspen Dental, not that one by Walgreens. Oh, really? In Walgreens. Yeah. In, in, yeah. So what do you know about that? Hopefully we'll get our water. Yeah. Checkers on Krill Avenue is almost complete. That should be open, I think, in the next couple of months. Next slide, please. Um, the other thing that we just transmitted at the be uh, beginning of the month was the capital improvements element for our comprehensive plan. That's something that is required to be done every year, but I don't think it's been done since 2008, which is that's not a good place to be as far as the state's concerned. Um, but it was transmitted. It's under review. They've got 60 days to review it, and it'll come back um, to the commission after that for adoption. Next slide, please. The cottages at St. John's, you guys have heard about this before, 194 duplex market rate rental units. They wiped everything out down there. Yes, they have comments? Yes. Yes, they do. Oh, this is bad. I was going to ask if they, they wind up keeping that tree in the back. Yes, sir. I was out there on the site last week on Friday, and a Friday afternoon, they retained all of the trees that they said they were going to. With the exception of a few that I had to go out, it was right along the edge of um, the drainage easement on the east side. And those trees, they they were not placed correctly on the survey. And so they they are in the place where buildings are going to be constructed. So they'll have to be removed. However, their um, tree mitigation schedule on their site plans was way over the minimum requirement and I don't think that they're going to be out of compliance whatsoever as far as that's concerned. Did but, they put some trees up the San John's River? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to know where these things came from. Um, the board, right? they came oh, they did. Okay. Where are they going? The old rich man's house. <laughs> that was the old Davis plantation in yeah. Jacksonville. Plantation. David, where is that? So they're just south of Jacksonville, still uh, Davis family that owned um, Wendy's. Oh, okay. okay. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, one of the other issues that they ran into was um, the large tree that they are, that they redesigned for. The curb that is proposed to come through there is going to encroach on the hip line a little bit. So they're going to be hiring an arborist. To do some root, print, root pruning and uplifting of the tree, and also um, additional fertilizers and, and things to help the tree to help reduce stress on the tree as they work around it. The grading around that area won't be changed significantly, so it's pretty. It's a pretty good bet that the tree will be just fine. It's just going to be look a little different. Um, but they are going great guns. They've dug a huge hole in the ground for their stormwater. It's 17 feet deep. Pretty amazing just to go out there and see it. Wow. Um, right now, the county is also working on St. John's Avenue right there in front of their parcel. So if you do want to go by there, you have to come in um, up 309 through yeah. Francis by the ballpark area. Yeah. That for a walk going to be underneath their driveway, the parking area. I'm sorry, ma'am. The stormwater, you said it was 17 feet. Is that on the property? Yes, it's on the property. It's in the center of the property. So it's going to be their center piece of the whole, everything's going to come around it. Okay. So it's going to be like a mere retention or detention yes. pond? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next 
project is the one that we had to postpone, but it's uh, <clears throat> Crystal Cove RV Resort. So it will be uh, approximately 400 RV sites. That would be the maximum number of RV sites and then 50 um, primitive or rustic camping sites. About 65 acres of that 177 acres is um, <laughs> developable. And that's where all the development will take place. The rest of it will be conservation, is planned for conservation. Okay. Next project, please. Eliana's drive through Coffee is proposed for um, the parcel, little tiny parcel between Wind Dixie and the racetrack on State Road 19. That's under review. They also there is now a pond. That's what I was just going to say. They have also committed to repairing the pond that happens every time it rains when you try to go into racetrack. But what I'm actually saying is that we're a retention pond in there. That, I mean, we're, it ponds that as a parking lot, driveway, all that, that will be right in there? No, it's that, it's that piece that Kramer owned. It's right there next to, um, when you, I mean, that pizza, pizza, pizza hut. hut. Mm -hmm. And it, the yes. back of it has that that retention or detention. Okay. Right. So it. there is high, you know, right there. I'm with it. Right. Okay. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this is the cultural resource survey that I mentioned earlier that we received the grant for. We have gone out for to bid and secured a consultant to handle that. We had a kickoff meeting for it last week, and they should be going out into the neighborhoods probably the week after next. So if you see people out there or you get questions about people out walking around taking pictures of houses in the historic district, that's what they're doing out there. And we will be posting notices to that effect on our social media and some other places just to let people know what's going on. They'll be they'll have badges and vests and hats identifying themselves. So if you again if you have any questions about that please let people know. Okay, next slide. And um, we just recently passed an impact fee for the city, and that will go into effect May, probably late May. After May 16th, it will go into effect. So any permit pulled after May in the city of Lacko will be impact. That's correct. Right. So, sir, what's the fee? It depends on the construction. If it's a single family residence, it should be about $6,500 to $7,000 for, for all the different impact fees. Is that going to include the 35 that hook up water and sewer? No, it does not. So that's an additional one. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Next slide, please. Thank you. Next slide. We all have probably heard about Longhorn Steakhouse. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know you heard about that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, they have demolished the building. That is cool. Yeah. Did you see the demo? That was cool. Yeah, they have demolished the building. They're working on the site, um, and they are a, a adjacent to. Um, Christmas. Thank you, Crystal. I was trying to think. <laughs> had and the Wawa is on the line. And so, yeah, so Crystal is in their immediate north and Wawa is north of them. But um, they expect to be open by, they are saying November. Uh, for October. Yeah. yeah Early fall. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I wish them the best. Um, next slide, please. And Scooters, as you know, is already open and they're going great guns in their business. And that is on State Road 19, just north of St. Bounds Avenue and next to the Chinese restaurant there. They have a capable waffle sandwich. Do they? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay. Aren't they north of Curl Avenue? Yes. yes. Is that what I said? St. John's Avenue. Yeah, they are. Just north of St. John's. No, they're north of Curl Avenue. They're south of St. John's. My apologies. Okay. All right, it's the toll road glitch. There you go. <laughs> I got that. Okay, um, some other places in town have done some pretty major renovations. The Taco Bell on Grill Avenue, not St. John's. 
<laughs> their renovation is almost complete. They've got a couple of list items that they need to address, and that'll be that. But they're open and underway for their business. Next slide, please. Tractor Supply has added this um, covered outdoor greenhouse, and that should be that is complete as of now. Walmart is planning a 7,000 square foot addition to the west side of their building to accommodate grocery pickup services. That is, uh, there's, there, I have, they haven't started construction yet, but their plans have been approved. So the next slide. And you all know about the Walmart. So they're also going great times. They're working out some stormwater issues right now between them and Longhorn, but I'm sure they'll figure it out and it'll move forward quickly. So may I ask a question? I don't know if you that or not, but I'm just being curious. Um, at the corner, are they going to have an out parcel or somewhere on that on that property too? When I say out parcel, another building because they have a, they have a sign out front. It means you're built, everybody says you're building a wall off, but then they have a sign out front that says available. That will be that's an interesting question. It was not on their site plan. Okay. But it's I mean, literally right on the corner. It's got a, a, a real estate sign that says available. I thought I don't have to ask about that too. Yeah, that's right. I had to ask him about it. Okay, so this is a summary of the, the data from 2022. We had over 220 cases that we did that we ran through that include um, building permits, cases that went before the planning board, and um, zoning verification letters, as well as some historic preservation cases. We collected about a little over $42,000 in case fees. And of those cases that we looked at, 18 of them were single family residences. We had seven annexations, 15 lot splits, 31 certificates of appropriateness, and um, 48 new businesses came into the city during 2022. The 2022 BTR or business tax receipt revenue is $102,000. Um, staff has been working diligently on collecting late BTRs and um, renewals that just were not completed last year. So we're going great guns on that. It's good to have people working on it. Next slide, please. Um, future planning projects. These are things that it's kind of my like my wish list. We. Um, do have money in the budget this year to update our comprehensive plan and out of that update will come uh, a new set of land development code regulations an update of our whole entire zoning code but that won't happen until 2024. Um, also on the wish list is a long-range transportation plan that's something that will help with grants um, that would come from the state and FDOT as well as possible um, FDEP grants we are required to have a water supply plan in our comprehensive plan that the, the water manager district has told me a couple of times now that we need to be doing it, but I'm working on getting a grant for that addition as well. It would be a similar project as the capital improvements element in that we would have to have someone else do it for us. And then um, the concurrency that goes hand in hand with the impact fees. So the reason we have impact fees is so that we can plan for and pay for future capacity improvements generate that will be needed because of new growth. And that's all about concurrency. So that's what our concurrency is all about. And we will have to be um, tracking the number of trips on our roadways. And that was in the CIE, the capital improvements element. Um, in that element, it noted that Krill, parts of Krill Avenue by the community um, county government center and also State Road 100 right through here through town are both operating at levels of service E and F. So they're about to fail completely. They're they're packed. The traffic's hardly moving at sometimes during the day, and um, concurrency would help us pay for those improvements. Those are state roads, but the state doesn't pay for everything, as you can imagine. Um, some of the things that we've got going right now 
our um, document scanning, we we leased a big, large format plotter and scanner where we can scan all the old maps and documents that are across the, across the street in the annex and get rid of the paper and have it documented electronically so that we can search things and access them that way. We're also looking at improving our website and doing mapping improvements. There's some a lot of corrections that need to be made on the zoning and um, future land use layers that the property appraisers and the county uses and generates. And that's something else that we're working on. And that's all I have for my update as far as that's concerned. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Uh, Ms. Wilson, have a question? Chair, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So, have you had so far a lot of pushback with the impact fee? Not much. I Not much. That. Every community around us charges them, right. except for Putnam County, of course. Um, but there, it's something that's the only way we're going to be able to afford those capacity improvements. So, for example, right now, our water treatment plant is at 50% capacity, which means we have to start planning for addition, additional capacity very soon. Okay. Any further questions, Ms. Walsh? Any comment? Yes, Ms. Tom. No, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes it okay. So now we will move on to uh, what is this revision of the planning board duties and discussions and uh, recommendations? This is something that I would like to discuss with you um, the possibility of morphing or combining the zoning board of appeals with the planning board. So instead of having to manage two separate boards, you all would act in two separate capacities. You would do your regular planning board duties, but then also act as a quasi-judicial body to make zoning board of appeals decisions. For example, if a company were to come in and ask for additional signage that's not permitted by our code, and they ask for a variance that will come before you. However, particularly for science variances, our code says that it's not really permitted because um, it's something that the applicant has created. It's not a zoning, a variance is typically for something that is not created by the applicant. If there was a boundary, something or other that changed, or somebody built their house too close to the within a setback or something like that, and, and now there's not enough space for the house next to it, whatever, a variance could be asked for that because it wasn't caused by the builder. It was caused by someone previously that hadn't been acknowledged. Um, but again, it would be something that would, that would be combined with you guys. There would be one less board for us to manage as far as having meetings. Um, and I think it would be, it would streamline things. Is there a board right now with doing appeals? There is, but it hasn't met in over five years. Is that right? Over five years? Well, so I've heard of. Yeah. Is there people on that board that are, I mean. Yes. I'm on it. Yes. Ms. Kitchen is on it as well as some other people. Hmm. And they just can't get a quorum to make decisions? And they haven't convened. They haven't been asked to convene. Yeah. Sure. So I think that's some information. Hi. Um, as the clerk, I wanted to mention one thing. It is very difficult to ask people to volunteer for a board that doesn't meet regularly. So we do struggle with vacancies on this board. Um, and while planning continues to amp up with the amount of cases that they're experiencing over 224 in one year, which as far as I've been affiliated with the city, I haven't heard of 224 being in one year, the, the chances of us having an appeal of the decision of the planning director, uh, the chances of having a variance is going to be more likely. Um, but do we think that it's something that's needed to have a board fully, fully volunteered on all of the time? Not necessarily. So that's why the planning department is asking you guys if you would take on these duties rather than us having to keep volunteers on a second board that wouldn't meet but once for every five years. 
and their term is actually five years. So I'm asking people, hey, would you sign up for a board that may meet once in your term? As you can imagine, it's been difficult for me. And so it's not a conflict. I mean, if we're doing something and then we yeah, so handle the appeal, then are they going to appeal what we decide? Or you would be hearing you may want to. It's a it's a possibility, but unlikely. And that we, because it, it's a because as a zoning board, you would be quasi judicial, um, which means that everybody has to be sworn in, um, and then the meeting would go. Like a planning board meeting, and then we would close the planning board meeting and open up a meeting. Oh, okay, right. Okay. It would be similar to the public hearings that you see at the commission level, except it's appellate in nature, which would mean that the chair or the vice chair would ask someone to be sworn in prior to them giving any testimony to the board. And there are many communities around the state that combine these boards and they act in the same capacity. And I can add to that some of the newer com uh, communities, such as the town of Indian Town, which was recently incorporated, they started off with a planning and zoning board rather than it being two boards. So we would, I mean, the, the, the two boards would converge. Mm -hmm. And so, how many people do you have on the other board? That are, are, I, know, I know you are a labor. Marshall Lane, and I forgot who else. Well, we're not asking to combine and have like 14 people. I think that that's unmanageable. Mm -hmm. I think that perhaps one or two more, but ideally no more than seven. Okay. Uh, but I thought I'd ask you because our board, I mean, this board is not fully um, staffed. Staffed, thank you. We have seven, don't we? We do, but I think we could have nine. nine. Right. Okay. But even nine can be a little. Right. Cumbersome. Right. So I'm looking for your thoughts on that. And um, I don't see any problem with it. Yeah. It seems almost like it would mean that like kind of that they would be together too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mr. Barnes. Barnes giving the thumb of us. <laughs> I don't have an issue with it other than I got a rainbow or a little you also got to wrangle the other zoning board members. We have not been to talk to about this, ask about it, or discuss it. This came up several years ago, but it was a very controversial issue. You want to step to the podium to speak to this, Mr. And um, yeah. Also, this department has to go before the commission, and right. the um, yeah. ordinance would have to be amended, and this would be a process. This is just, you know, some thoughts on how you feel about it, yeah. whether you'd be open and amenable to it. And, then, and, and I think you know, since we're short two people, mm -hmm. if there if there's board members over there, why we have and if they want to volunteer, mm -hmm. why not, you know, involve those two or three or whatever. Mm -hmm. Leader Kitchen said what he said was South Coast Street and Latin Florida. Uh, I keep one of the zoning board of appeals probably around 2015 when there was a new under my previous planning director who was out by the commission for various reasons I won't say in public. Uh, he wanted he was mad at the zoning board of appeals because they rejected him changing parking lots from the large size cars to the compact cars. He took it to the commission and the commission overturned the zoning board of appeals. And so he moved in, he took a lot of turn duties to put it under your board. He tried to get rid of the zoning board of appeals. He asked the city commission to dissolve it. I, Marshall Lane, and several others spoke against it because I feel that the, the citizens of Palatka need to have more than one off avenue of appeal. I got on the board when the commission was saying there wasn't anybody on the board that needed, needed somebody on the board, so I volunteered for the zoning board of appeals. And yes, obviously, Mr. Thomas is very right. And so many things have to be changed, and it does have to go to the commission. But I am against it because I don't think that the people's right to redirect the government needs to be. Lesson. We need probably more boards, not less. But the zoning, we don't we, if we don't meet that much, what's the problem? And as far as the 225 buildings, once the impact fee comes in, all the bad developers are going to fall away, and then we'll get good developers that probably drop down to probably 100, and we'll get prime developers that know if you have an impact fee, you have a good government that takes care of you, and they come here. And that's a direct quote from a developer who wanted to do the money, the money area. But yeah, I'm 100% against it. I know Marsha Lane is, she's speaking for herself. She spoke to the city commission meeting as did other board members. And that's what I think about it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kiss. So actually, I mean, you're just, you're asking for our opinion and and maybe support of what you're asking mm -hmm. and then moving it on to 
the legal realms of everything through the city council. Yeah. Well, I think you've got your answer from the board here. Uh, you know, I think that um, if you want to move it on forward from us, you know, that um, you know, I mean, we didn't really understand what you were asking. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I agree with Mr. Kitchens in the sense that you know, the, the legal terms of the appeals board since you need to know the board, but um, if you're adding that that to us, you don't have another avenue past us when we're we put our planning board hats on, we start that term and we put the appeals board from the zoning board hat on to turn my hat around and says chairman of the of that. So um yes sir Mr. Bar. Um just to reiterate what Ms. Walsh said who my understanding would be very, very, very convincing that where both boards would convene on the same topic. I hang on top of that, unless I'm wrong, uh, any of our decisions can go to the commission for final appeal. So there is another avenue, uh, not, not to contradict anything, but um, I served on the Zoning Board of Appeals or approvals for the county. Um, I believe this is a similar concept. Um, and it is, it's very different in nature. So I would request if we tackle this, we have a little background information presented to us on, you know, codes and, and all yeah. the stuff that we need to make Absolutely. applicable decisions. Right. Um, but other than that, I've got no objection. Very yeah. comment. Don't want to talk about anything else about it. Do you have anything to say? Um, just kudos to planning. Yes. And to the and guys doing a good job. And Thank you. It's so good to be here. It's always nice to have you. Mm -hmm. um, now that you're leaving us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that we got 45 more days. Um, is there any, anything else that we need to discuss about this one? No, sir. Okay. I believe that is our last citizen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Grant, do you have anything you'd like to say? Nothing further other than kudos to everyone. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Good. Thank you. Just one. So, can I have a, a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. There's a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, staff? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, Thank you very much.